Welcome back, everyone, to the Bears Profit Plays YouTube channel. Today is Tuesday, August 20th, and I'm back breaking down a few more plays for Tuesday night's game in the MLB. We're going to be looking at the Houston Astros going up against the Boston Red Sox as the first play of the day. And then for the best play of the day, it's going to be a match between my Washington Nationals going up against the Rockies. Four total player props with the two best player props being towards the end of the video. Hope everybody enjoys their Tuesday, and let's break down some ball. All right, guys, let's take a look at this uh, graphic from Monday night. Pretty good day so far. 2-0 in the best bets. That's really all that matters. Looking for that 3-0 sweep. We've got the Reds on the money line. Plus 140. I think they closed plus 130. What was the kid's name? Justin? Julian? Aguirre. I want to thank Jaguar. I don't know his name. He was a, They called him up from AAA. Did a pretty good job. Had his uh, welcome to the NBA MLB moment in the first inning. Hanging a slider against Vladdy. Uh, he sent that thing 500 to uh, deep left field. I think it hit the third deck in Toronto, but he settled himself down, only gave up two runs. Reds had a really big fifth or sixth inning in the top half, uh, putting up four runs, six to two, and then from there was easy. So they did get the win there. Seth Lugo under 2.5 runs, only really one bad pitch in this game to Joe Adele. That was uh, for a double, gave up two runs, 97 pitches, eight strikeouts, really good game out of him. Lawrence Butler, he just started, got a single on an 0-2 count, so that's really promising, over 1.5 bases. But as you guys know, getting a single in the first at-bat usually is a curse, hopefully not this time for Butler. Mets team total over 4.5 runs. This was a killer. If you'd have told me we'd have got three runs in the first four innings against Trevor Rogers, I said, how much did we win by? Walked it off in the bottom of the ninth, a four to three win over the Orioles. So that one hurt there. Pete Alonso did have himself a double in his second at bat. And then Alex Bregman did not start tonight. Not sure what was going on with him. Uh, I saw that he was held out the game before, but I didn't know he had an injury. So that was just my mistake there. So no Alex Bregman play there. Let's go over to the leaderboard. 1-0 day on the best bet, 1-0 on the prop so far. Looking for that 2-0 day with Butler and the Athletics going right now. Hopefully get the 3-0 sweep. Hopefully we do the same thing today. Let's take a look at the games for Tuesday night. The Houston Astros going up against the Boston Red Sox. The Astros so far against the Red Sox. I think it's 2-2 on Monday night. I'm going to take them, though, here at home on the money line to get the job done. The only reason I like the Astros in this game is because they're going to have their ace back on the mound in Renel Blanco, and he has really settled himself back down. He was going through a pretty tough stretch of games, giving up two-plus runs in seven consecutive. Not pitching terribly, but he was having a tough time selling himself in early in those games. He had no problem his last game going up against the Rays. He went six innings, only gave up two hits. He brought his ERA back down to under three. This has been one of the best pitchers in baseball at limiting the hits this season. The only issue that he's been running into is giving up too many free passes. He has 51 total walks in the year and only 85 hits given up. So clearly, he has a problem giving up too many walks. But in the last game going up against the Rays, no issued walks in that game, first time all season long. If he does that in this game, I feel very confident with the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox. They have been struggling just a little bit to hit the ball after the All-Star break. Over the last 10 games for Blanco, though, he has given up four hits or less in seven of those 10 games. So he doesn't have problem giving up hits. If he can find his command in this game going up against the Red Sox, the Astros should have no problem here. Plus, we have Nick Paveda on the mound on the other side. Nick has really been struggling over the last several games, giving up three-plus runs in seven of the last ten and giving up two-plus home runs in four consecutive games. He's now coming in with a 4.49 ERA, 1.13 whip, and the home runs for him, it's really been the problem. I can see the Astros putting up a couple home runs in this game in the first couple innings, then letting Blanco get us the win in this one going six or seven innings. I'll take the Astros here on the money line as the play for the player propped on the screen. We're going to go with the leadoff man, Jose Altuve, to go over 1.5 bases going up against the Red Sox. We have a potential home run candidate. Nick has also had some home run problems this season. He's given up 21 on the year, only 19 appearances, and he has given up two-plus home runs in four consecutive games. It's going to be a right-handed match for Jose Altuve going up against the right side this season. 27 extra base hits, 13 of his 16 home runs. He has a 286 batting average. Love him in this game to crush one over 1.5 base as the play there for the best play of the day. We're going to be looking at the Washington Nationals going up against the Colorado Rockies. Taking the Washington Nationals, it is not for the weak. It is really for the people who like to live life on the edge. But we're going to take them in this game. We're not going to take them on the money line. We're not going to take them on the first five. We're taking this team, this frisky team, on the run line. Minus 1.5 is the play. I understand this team more than a lot of people. And I understand that we really aren't trying to win games. But this team, they've got a lot of heart. And I know that we're really not trying to win games. But they're putting up some pretty good efforts over the last couple games in the last couple series. We're going to have our best guy on the mound, in my opinion, the rookie DJ Hers, who's going to get another chance on the mound going up against the Rockies because the first time around did not go so well on the road against the Rockies. He gave up three runs and three home runs the first time that he saw this team very early in his rookie season. 
but now it is going to be a home start. And over the last several home starts, he has been pretty good for us. Against the Giants, he did have some problems. He didn't have his stuff. He had way too many walks. He only gave up two runs in that game, though. But going up against the Brewers and the San Diego Padres, two teams that have been pretty good this season hitting the ball, he was really good in those both of those games. Five-plus innings in both those games. Only gave up a combined two runs. He has not given up more than two runs in five consecutive games now, and that's what I'm looking for in this game. Just give us a chance to put up runs because we are going to get Austin Gober on the other side for the Rockies. There's been a lot of starting pitchers this season that have struggled, but nobody, nobody sitting closer to the bus driver on the struggle bus than Austin Gober. He's now given up two-plus runs in 11 of the last 10 games, giving up three-plus runs in 80% of those games, coming in with a 4.82 ERA and a 1.31 whip. I've said this a couple of times about Austin, and I'll say it again. It's really not his fault for a lot of these starts because even if he's pitching poorly and you can see that he's ready to come out of the game, the Rockies have to leave him in because the alternative is way worse than what Austin can do. Austin's going to have to give the Rockies five or six innings every single game because – if they put in the bullpen, they're just going to get lit up anyway. So they might as well just leave Austin out there. He has given up five plus hits in 10 consecutive games. And the home runs have also been a problem for him this season. Up 24 home runs in 23 games. The Nationals, I'm sure a lot of you guys have watched them throughout the season because I do like to take them. This team, they can surprise you at times. We have some big swingers on this team. I think we're going to get a couple home runs. I'm going to take them here on the run line with DJ on the mound. Give me them minus 1.5 as the play here. For the player props on the screen, we're going to take Kiebert Ruiz, Mr. Kiebe, the catcher, over 1.5 bases going up against the Rockies. This man has been seeing the ball very well over the last couple of games. He has three home runs over the last three going up against the Phillies. He's collected a hit in five consecutive games, and he's now worked that batting average with a 226. Not a very good batting average, but he has been a lot better over the last five games. And this will be a left-handed pitcher on the mound. He doesn't have a lot of attempts going up against left-handed pitching, but he has five extra base hits, 19 hits in total with only 85 plate appearances. Ruiz is a switch hitter, and I like him in this spot going up against the lefty in Austin. He has been giving up a lot of home runs on the season, and nobody on this Nats team right now is seeing the ball better. I'm going to take him over 1.5 bases as the graphic play there. Let's go over the best props of the day. For the batting prop, we're going to be looking at Ryan Mountcastle of the Orioles going up against the Mets and Jose Quintana. Mountcastle on Monday night already had himself a pair of hits, a single and a double. So he is coming into this game in pretty good form. The matchup will be going up against Jose Quintana, who really had a good back end of June and start of July. But coming into August, it's been a completely different guy on the mound. He's now given up three plus runs in three consecutive games going up against the Angels, Mariners, and the Athletics. Those are three teams that you really can't be giving up three plus runs to to one single guy. His ERA has now skyrocketed over four. It's now sitting at 4.26 with a 1.29 whip. And I don't trust him at all going up against the O. So I'm going to take uh, Ryan Mountcast from this game to get a couple hits. Jose Quintana also gave up seven hits in the last game, and I don't see why he wouldn't give up another seven hits in this game against the O's. They have been a lot better since the All-Star break. The numbers for Ryan Mountcastle going up against left-handed pitching this season, they've been really good. He has a batting average of 295, 12 extra base hits, and whenever you look at the pitches that we're going to be getting in this game, fastball and curveball, he's going to be throwing that about 50% of the time against the Heat. Ryan, he's hitting at 339. Against the curveball, he's hitting at 342. Love my chance in this game for Ryan Mountcastle. Over 1.5 bases as the play there for the pitching prop tonight we're going to be looking at a guy who's been dealing with injuries on and off for about two years now for the dodgers it's going to be walker bueller of the dodgers to go under his total outs going up against the Mariners. this is only going to be walker's second start in nearly a couple months of baseball so i'm not entirely sure what is going to be the over under in this game i'm not sure what the total is going to come out at but i am going to take the under whatever it is you would think this is going to be a really good matchup going up against the Mariners because they are one of the worst teams in baseball going up against right-handed pitching and it's very possible that he could have a really good outing, but he did not have a very good game in his return, and I think the Mariners can get to him in this game, even though they haven't been hitting the ball well against right-handed pitching. Going up against the Brewers in his last start, he only went three total innings. He gave up four runs, a home run. He walked four people, now having a 6.02 ERA in his nine games pitched this season. I really think the walks in this game is going to be the problem for him. If they elevate that pitch count, because I'm pretty sure he's still on a pitch count for the Dodgers coming off of that injury, the Mariners this season, while they don't hit right-handed pitching very well, they do draw a lot of walks. They are top eight in baseball at drawing walks against right-handed pitching. They just need to be extra patient at the plate, and they should be able to put up some runs on Walker, get that pitch count up, get him out of the game as fast as possible. We are going to see the fastball a lot in this game as well, and that's the best pitch the Mariners have been hitting all season long, and that's one of the worst pitches that Walker has, a 385 batting average to opposing teams on the season. Everything is set up for Walker to have a bad game, even though it is going up against the Mariners. We just need to stay extra patient at the plate. Give me the under total outs allowed for Walker as the play here. Let's go over to the graphic recap. We are going to be looking at the Astros on the money line going up against the Red Sox, like Blanco on that game. Jose Altuve over 1.5 base against the Red Sox. Keep it Ruiz over 1.5 base against the Rockies, giving the Nats 
run line, minus 1.5. That'll be plus money. Ryan Mountcastle, over 1.5 base against Jose Quintana. Then Walker Bueller, I put it at under 15.5 outs. Not sure what it's going to be at. I'm going to play it, whatever it is. And uh, maybe I'll put some in the notes if I can get it in time before tomorrow morning for work. But I like the under for Walker Bueller on the outs tomorrow. Guys, that's going to do it for the MLB Picks and Props for Tuesday, August 20th slate of games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching.